Yo, what's good YouTube, it's Boardsy, and this is going to be a video covering the Pulsar 4K dongle and giving an update on the X2H, because I realize it's been like over a month and I still have not reviewed this thing like I said I would. I did obviously give my opinions on it, but that was just a pre-production yet. But yeah, Pulsar did come out with their 4K dongle, um, extremely similar to Razer. This is going to work for all of their models. And it's an add-on dongle. It is a bit more expensive than I was expecting at $20. I was honestly expecting 10 to 20 And I understand this is not a massive difference. But $20, if you're somebody who does not value 4K, if you've already tried it before and you're like, this doesn't this doesn't meaningfully add to my experience, I would say it's definitely not worth um, spending $20 on it. But if you're someone like me who has a high refresh rate monitor, advocates for 4K like you've been using it for a while, then I would say just absolutely go for the Pulsar dongle, especially since it's going to be compatible with the X-Lite V3. Basically, if you're a mouse enthusiast, no doubt, just get the Pulsar dongle. You're just going to want to have it. But if you're just somebody who's more casual um, and you don't find it necessary, 1000 Hertz is definitely going to be good enough. And I don't know, but let me know what you guys think about companies doing the separate dongle route, because I guess not taxing people for it like in the price of the mouse if they don't want it is a good idea compared to something like the ninjutsu sora that's 120 dollars and comes with a dongle but yeah i do want to quickly mention one bug i guess or not a bug but it is a feature that you can connect two mice to the same dongle um, but if you have both of the mice turned on or just accidentally touch one then they do start to add funk act funky um, as you can see it just starts making the windows noise and i just lose access to both of the mice since i have both connected but now if i turn one of them off they stop fighting they're like beta fish you know and now this mouse is working perfectly fine so it's just one thing to be aware of but it is worth noting that on the razor dongle you cannot connect two mice at once you have to unpair one from the dongle before pairing another one um, so it's just again a little thing worth noting but the dongle's performance itself i was extremely satisfied with the 4k implementation i did not have any stutters like noticeable fps loss obviously it's going to work in some games better than others but in fortnite and kovacs really i did not have any issues with the 4k and obviously games like overwatch valorant i haven't tested cs2 but i would imagine that is again going to run extremely well with 4k and higher polling rates so in terms of performance if you're somebody you bought into 4k i'd say this is going to be an average 4k experience i do run every mouse i use through mouse tester i, I can start putting those graphs because people have really been on on me lately for not fucking putting any testing in my videos but it's like guys i've been doing this for four years like it's not just going to change because people are posting shitty end-to-end -end latency tests shout out to house gaming he's doing the testing very right but i'm not going to fucking do what he does but yeah as far as i'm concerned the click latency and motion latency on this mouse are absolutely top tier um genuinely up there with some of the best sensor implementations like there's just nothing really um for me to critique so yeah, for me, it's really a no-brainer. If I can use 4K on a mouse, I'm obviously going to use it. Yes, the battery life is going to be worse. That goes without saying. It will blink red when it's low battery. But yeah, if you're somebody who truly cannot tell a difference between 1K and 4K, then it's not worth spending $20 on. Like, I'm not here to fucking sell you guys this dongle. I'm just here to um, tell you how I feel about it. But I guess that is kind of all for the 4K segment of this video. Again, I kind of wish it was like 5 to $10 cheaper, or at least there should be some kind of way to bundle it on the website so it's only $10 when you're buying the mouse as well. I don't know. I'm just full of these great ideas that are good for the consumer at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, now I guess I'll talk about the X2. H and really um, this is just gonna be a quick comparison to the X2 Mini. But yeah this is the famous top down angle compared to some other popular small shapes. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for the incredible production value. But yeah another good comparison is definitely the OP1 Wii from Endgame Gear because it is going to feel like a larger mouse. It also does have much flatter sides um, but similar in the fact that they both have a high back hump in the palm of your hand. So yeah, best way to put it is if you're looking for something more compact, go with the X2H, but if you want something more narrow, longer, just stretched out, I guess that would be the case for the OP1 Wii. Obviously, factoring in tech, the mouse is going to be a bit cheaper, but there's also no 3395 sensor, no 4K compatibility. You can really determine how much that matters. I get very similar scores when testing these head-to-head -head in Kovacs, which I've decided is all that matters at the end of the day. But between the X2H and the X2 Mini, I definitely prefer the X2 Mini. I don't know if it's just because I'm more used to that shape. I've been using it for longer, um, but specifically for fingertip, 
grip and just the flat sides in general i don't find it to be worse for claw grip i think if anything there's a bit more like finger maneuverability on the mouse where with the x2h it's kind of like very locked and stable in my palm but there's just not as much maneuverability I really don't think that's a bad thing. It's just going to come down to what shape you prefer. The X2H was made just to be an X2 um, with a bit more curvature and a hump. Like I'm using pretty much the exact same grip style on both of these mice. The only thing that changes is how much of my palm is contacting the hump of the mouse. I'm really only talking about the mini sizes because... Uh, to be honest with you guys, that's all I use. Uh, the X2H medium just feels super bulky and chunky, kind of like a ZH12. It's just not a mouse that I enjoy using. And the X2 medium is just a fine mouse, but I just find it to be, once again, worse than the mini for the grip styles I use. And people think I have small hands. I have like 21 by 11 centimeter hands, but I just have always enjoyed using smaller mice. I have no issues whatsoever with the build quality on my X2H. I'm going to get shot dead like Kennedy for saying it, but feels on the same level as like my endgame gear mouse's build um pretty much the same as the super light which might just feel stronger than anything even though there has been some reported creaking on those um but yeah i really have no issues with the build no issues with click quality and this is a unit that i've had for some more time now all of the buttons are solid so yeah at the end of the day i'm very satisfied with the x2h once i got it hooked up with the 4k dongle it just absolutely felt like a top tier mouse as it should since it costs a hundred dollars you know but yeah, I would definitely say that this is not going to be the safest shape out there. It is very high profile. So if you already have something like an XG Mini or a small mouse that you're satisfied with, um, just make sure that it is going to be the shape for you before trying it. But if you have no small mouse, um, this is definitely just one of them to consider, in my opinion. But that's going to be all for this review of the Pulsar 4K dongle and just an update of my thoughts on the X2H. If you enjoyed this video, obviously be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, but that's going to be all. Peace.